Hello, let's do some math for fun. Here, yeah, this Puna and Sim question from 1969 for you guys. We are going to find A1 if A1, A2 is equal to 1, A2, A3 is equal to 2, A3, A4 is equal to 3, and so on, so on, so on. Man, this is like an infinite system of equations, isn't it? And we are also given that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over a n plus 1 is equal to 1. Alright? Hmm, how can we possibly do this? Oh well, anyway, as always, please pause the video and try it first. And don't worry, if I get stuck, Shotutu will help us out, right? Alright, here we go. I think it's a good idea to make some observations. So, let's look at this board first. From a1, a2 is equal to 1, we know a1 is of course 9 equal to 0, and I will just divide the a1 on both sides, so we see a2 is nicely equal to 1 over a1. Great. Now, we are just going to do the same thing for the other ones, and hopefully you can see a nice pattern. Well, right here, let me isolate a3, which is going to be 2 over a2, and I'm just going to put this right here for a2, right? And we will just do the reciprocal, so that means the bottom will go to the top. So we will just get 2 and then times a1, and that's going to be for a3. Great. Now, if we continue, a4 is going to be 3 over a3. So we do have a very nice pattern, huh? Alright. And for this one, we just need to enter this on the, to the bottom. So this is 3 over 2a1. Great. And let's see. We are going to get more fractions now. a5, well, I will have 4 over a4, and this is going to be, put this here, the top will stay on the bottom, and then the bottom will actually go to the top. So here we have 4 times 2a1, like this. Okay, great. Let's do a few more to see if we can actually see the pattern or not, and make sure everything works out the way it has to be. A6, which will be 5 over A5, that's going to be, put this on the bottom, which is 4 times 2 times A1, put this on the top, so we have 5 times 3. Okay, let's do one more. A7, which is 6 over A6, that will be, put this on the bottom, so we have 5 times 3, and put this on the top, so we have 6 times 4 times 2 times a1. Alright, so we can see that. First observation, the a1, uh, it cannot make out its mind. Sometimes it likes to be on the bottom, sometimes it likes to be on the top. So we have to break down into cases. We'll have to figure out the formula accordingly, right? And we are just dealing with the even numbers or the odd numbers. And the good thing is that the even sustain together like with the odds. Great, all right? So, let's come back here. Let me just write down a general formula. Let me put down A2n. So we are looking at this, this, and that, and try to write a general formula for that. Well, first thing to notice, for the n, if n is even here, if the subscript is even here, A1 is on the bottom, right? And for the top, we have the n numbers. We have the 5 times 3, for example, right here. Let me actually just put that down right here on the top first. And I'm just going to write down 3 times 5 and so on, so on, so on. You can imagine if we have 8, 8, the top will be what? 3 times 5 times 7. The biggest number of the top right here, it will be 1 less than this, right? So this right here is 2n. We will finish at 2n minus 1. So that's the formula for that. And on the bottom though, we have a1, and let me just put that down first. And then we have 2 times 4, and we have all the um, even numbers up to what? Well, the biggest even number here is actually 2 less than whatever this is. So we will finish at 2n minus 2. Great, that's what we have. Now, let's do the formula for a of 2n plus 1. For this, a1 is on the top. Okay, interesting. So it's like Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. It wants to be on the top. Okay, the events are on the top as well. So let's write that down. First, we can take a look at this. 
we can write down a1 times 2 times 4 dot 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 up to this is going to be 1 less than whatever this is, right? So this is 2m plus 7. This is 2m plus 1. We have to just minus 1 for that, so we'll end up with 2n. Again, I'm looking at this to write a formula. 1 less than whatever this is. So we end up with this. On the bottom, we have the odd numbers. We have 3, 5, so on, so on, so on. And we will be finished at where? Well, you see, the biggest odd number on the bottom here is 5, which is 2 less than this. So I will have to subtract 2 from here. 2n plus 1 minus 2, we get 2n minus 1. So that will be the formula for that. Great. So it's always helpful if you write down some terms and then just try to make sure everything works out the way it has to be. Great. Now, what else can we do? Well, let's utilize this. The good thing is that this is saying the limit as n goes to infinity of a whatever over a sub whatever, the same whatever, and then plus 1. And then that's equal to 1, yeah, for the limit. The whatever here is 2n, same thing here. So we can just go ahead and divide this by that, and then take the limit, and we will know that has to be equal to 1. Very great. All right, we just have to do this one carefully, though. So check this out. 2 a2n over a2n plus 1. All right, let's see how we can do that. Well, well, just imagine we're putting this on the top and then the big fraction bar here. This denominator will go up to the top, yeah? So you see, you just have 3 times 3, which is 3 squared. So let me write that down, times 5 squared, and then dot dot dot, up to 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 1, which is just 2n minus 1 squared. Great. Now, for the bottom, well, we have this on the bottom. Likewise, this will also be on the bottom. We have a1 times a1, which is a1 squared. And uh, let me actually just push this a little bit to the front a little bit right here, just in case I have no more space. a1 squared times... Next, we have 2 times 2, which is 2 squared, and then 4 squared, dot, dot, dot. But be super careful here. What do we have at the end? This right here, we have 2n minus 2. And then the end right here is 2n. They are two different things. So we will actually have to write this down. Right here, this is 2n minus 2. And then we will have to have that being squared because there's something in the front. That's 2n minus 2, yeah? But be really careful, we have this 2n, so we have to multiply by 2n here. Yeah, I'm sorry about my little boards right here. So let me actually write it down better again. So this times 2 square times 4 square, dot dot dot, and then 2n minus 2 square times 2n, like this. All right, this is pretty good, but let me use utilize this again to just demonstrate what exactly is happening, right? So have a look. We are trying to divide a sub of an even term over the next, which is going to be the odd term. So have a look. If we do a6 divided by a7, this is going to be the following. Well, we see that 5 times 3, they will be on the top. So again, this is 3 times 3, which is 3 squared. Let me write it as 3 times 3, yeah? And then we have 5 times 5. Done. Next. On the bottom, what we have is... We have all these guys. So first, we have a1, a1. So I will just put that as a1 squared. And then next, I have 2 times 2. That's good. And next, I have 4 times 4. But... We have one more term, which is 6, right here, right? Because remember, we are doing this divided by that. This is also on the bottom. We have that additional 6. Now, do you recognize what's happening right here for the product of like even numbers, odd numbers, and all that? There's a really famous formula for the following, right? But in order to do so, we have to make sure we do it super carefully. In fact, this is one of the formulas that, you know, I am kind of worry about sometimes. All right, check this out. 
we have four numbers on the top, but here we have five numbers well, besides the A1 square. Let's do the following. I want to have the same amount of numbers on the top and on the bottom right here. So it says that, let me just put down one times. And can we do that? Yes, we definitely can, right? But please just put down one one, that's all, right? Do not put down two ones, because that's, it's going to get crazy sometimes. You have to make sure you have the same amount of numbers, like this, in order for the following to work. With that said, I'm just going to look at this. Well, let's put on one times. So again, you will see that this pretty much match, and I put on a one times, it's just because this and that, they are just going to be the additional numbers, like that, all right? Now, let me tell you guys what's so cool about this right here. This time, what we have is a product of like a bunch of things. It's actually like a, it's not a series, but just a capital pi function, infinite product. If you look at the following, right? But I will just put this down right here for you guys. The famous formula is the Wiley's product, or the Wiley's formula. So I don't need this anymore. Let me just erase that. Greek. So let me just put that down. Why this product, which it says, if we have two over one times two over three. So you see, I'm just making sure I'm pairing things up carefully. And the next is four over three. And the next is four over five. You see, two, two, four, four, and then six, six, and so on, so on, so on. But for the odd numbers, it has to be one, three, three, five, five, and so on, so on. So I'll put on one more for you. This is six over five, and so on, so on, so on. Right? So that's how it goes like. And I will tell you this right here. You actually end up with a very fantastic result. This becomes pi over two. What is product? I will include Wuhan's video in the description so you guys can see how to come up with this formula, especially this result, pi over two. So now, here is the deal. We will go back here, of course. Right here, we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of two, a to n over a to n plus one. This right here is equal to one. So this means if we just look at this right here and take the limit, if you look at all this part, so all this part, I will just actually write it down like this. If you just look at all this part and we'll take the limit, so we'll just say as n goes to infinity, the left hand side will give us one because this right here says so, and the right hand side is what? Well, all this is pretty much the reciprocal of what I put down right here. So all this is going to be pi, well, it was pi over two, so this right here will be two over pi. But don't forget, we still have the one over a one square. So this is one over a one square. Oh my God, can we solve this equation now? Yes, we totally can. So let's do this and let's do that. We will get a1 is equal to square root of the reciprocal of that, which is pi over two. Therefore, we'll see, multiply this on both sides and take the square root on both sides and don't forget the plus minus. Finally, a1 will be plus or minus square root of that, which is 2 over pi. Woohoo! We are done. Just like this. Yeah? You like it? She likes it. How about you guys? Hopefully you guys like it too. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching.